Mining is one of the most profitable ways to make money in Elite Dangerous. And if you're new to the game, you should stick around, because today I'm going to show you a ship build I made designed for new players that requires no engineering, no unlockable modules, and that you can buy today for less than 4 million credits. Today's video is sponsored by Secret Lab. We all strive for the best possible gaming experience, but the importance of a good quality chair is often underestimated. Secret Lab produces some of the most comfortable and high quality gaming chairs you can get. So upgrade your commander chair today and fly in style and comfort. Follow the link in the video description to their store, type in your height, your weight, and it will tell you which chairs fit you for the best possible seating experience. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. So we're going to be looking at a entry-level mining build for all the new players out there. Because this guide is intended for new players, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail with the different modules, what they do, and why I've chosen the modules that I have. So the first thing you want to do is, of course, we need a ship to build this on. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to go into a shipyard, and we're going to see if we can find ourselves a dolphin. This is not available on all stations, so you might have to fly around a bit. At the end of the video, I'll show you where you can find pretty much all the different modules I'm going to be showing you today. So first of all, we're going to go ahead and we're going to purchase a, a, a Dolphin. Select the store current ship option, so you don't sell your current ship, they'll just be put into storage, you can take it out later. Once you've got yourself your brand new Dolphin, you're going to go ahead and we're going to head into Outfitting. In here, we're going to head into Hard Points and we're going to sell the two small Pulse Lasers. We don't need those anymore. And we're going to replace these with Mining Lasers. So go into Mining Tools. There's a lot of different Mining Tools. We're looking for Mining Lasers. That different types of mining. We're going to focus on laser mining. It's the easiest to get into and also very profitable. When selecting the right ones here, or you can see there are two of them, go for the ones, look at the little icons where it says 1D, then there's a dot, then there's two icons underneath. One of them has this little turret. That's not the one you want. You want the one that has this little um, crosshair. So buy that. That's a fixed weapon, meaning it's not gimbaled and you have to aim it manually. Once you've fitted your two mining lasers, we're going to skip utilities. Just for good measures, make sure that all shots in here are empty. You don't need anything in here. And we're going to go down to the core internals instead. Here, we're going to slightly upgrade our power plant. And we're going to upgrade it to a D-rated power plant. It gives us a little bit more power that we need. And it's lighter, meaning we're going to get a bit of jump range, making it easier for us to get around. So let's go ahead and let's equip a 4D power plant. For the thrusters here, it's pretty much the same story. We're going to go and pick... D-rated thrusters. Now, it is nice to have good thrusters, but you can look how expensive this buster here costs more than this full ship fitted combined. So these can get quite pricey when you're up in the class 5 here. So we're going to go D-rated both to keep the price down and also the weight. However, on the frameshift drive, we don't want to spare anything here. We want an A-rated. This is what's going to give us a good jump range, meaning we can get around the galaxy a lot quicker with a lot fewer jumps. Yes, this is an expensive module, but trust me, it's worth it. For the life support, we are once again going to go ahead and buy D-rated because it's the lightest. So we're going to save some mass. Next, your power distributor. This is what distributes power out to your shields, your weapons, and your thrusters. Here, we're going to go ahead and we're going to buy ourselves a 3B. We can buy an A-rated if you have the money, but B-rated will be just fine. You have plenty of power from, uh, from a B-rated, and you can see it is significantly cheaper as well. And finally, the sensors. Again, we don't need that powerful sensors. So once again, we're going to go ahead and buy D-rated, nice and cheap, very light. Now that's all you have to do in the core internals, and we're going to move on to the optional internals. There's a lot of stuff fitted in here. We're going to get rid of the majority of it. I know a lot of newer players, they really like their advanced docking computers, so the ship dock for them. However, it is going to hold you back. And especially on mining ships, you are so dependent on your optional internals that it's just going to be too much of the weight around your legs to fly around with a, uh, with a docking computer. You will have to learn to dock manually at some point, so you might as well just begin to learn. And a Dolphin is not a bad ship to do it in. It's small, it's light, it's very maneuverable, so it's a good place to start and learn. So we're going to replace this, and we're going to replace this with a surface scanner. You're going to need this surface scanner to scan rings so you can locate hotspots where you can go and you can mine materials. The Super Cruise Assists we are going to replace with a prospecting limpet controller and we're going to get a A rated. A is very important here because the higher the rate, the bigger the letter, the more fragments, the more chunks of rock are you going to be able to shoot out and get 
aka making you more money. The little number next to it just determines how many active limpets you can have at the same time. We're going to have a one, so we can only have one active limpet. Next up, we need a refinery to refine all the ore into uh, materials that we can sell. And for the refinery here, you can pretty much pick anyone you want. The A-rated one is quite expensive, so I just downgraded it to a, to a B-rated one. It's not like you're going to get more or better uh, materials for a higher uh, rate refinery. It just has more bins, meaning it's essentially just have a little bit extra room inside it. For the two remaining class 2 slots, we are going to be fitting collector limpets. These are limpets you can send out to collect fragments so you don't have to fly up to them manually. Small drones that will pick fragments up for you and put them into your ship. We can go A-rated here. Not very expensive. And they have a nice long lifetime. Next, in the class 3 slot, I'm going to be fitting a shield generator. We don't necessarily need a shield when we're mining, but since we are designing the ship for newer players and we don't have a docking computer, there's a good chance you're going to be flying into a few things here and there. So having a shield generator is probably a good idea. However, you can see here right now that we can't actually fit it. It's all red. That's because we already have a shield generator fitted on this ship. So let's go up and let's take the 4E shield generator. Let's go ahead and let's sell that. Go back down to the class 3, and now we can go in and we can find that 3B shield generator that we want. This is not going to help survive for very long in a fight, but it's enough to take the bump and scratches for you randomly flying into a station or a rock. And for the remaining class 4 and 5 slots, we are going to be fitting cargo racks. So go in here, find cargo racks, and for the class 4, we're going to be fitting class 4 cargo racks. And in the class 5, a class 5 cargo rack. And that's actually it. The ship is now done and is ready. You just need a few settings to make sure it actually works properly. We need to go over here to your fire groups. What I recommend you do is you keep your mining lasers here in group 1. And pair those up with your collectors. That means when you pull your main trigger, it's going to fire your lasers and it's going to launch limpets at the same time until you have the two limpets out you can have. That means you're never going to have to worry about your collectors. They will always have enough collectors out. And then in your secondary fire, put your prospector limit controller so you can point at a rock, shoot out a prospector, and it will then tell you what materials are inside the rock. The final steps is to head into advanced maintenance. You need to do this before every uh, trip. Go in here to, um, to restock and make sure you have a full cargo hold of limpets. These, of course, you need for your collector limpets and your prospector limpets. So make sure you bring those along. Again, they're dirt cheap, so don't worry about it. You're going to make like a thousand times the value of these limpets per trip. And if we just finally here quickly go down and take a look at the ship stats, you can see here that even with a full cargo hold, remember our cargo hold is full of limpets right now, we can still jump over 21 light years. And if we take, our, uh, take all the limpets we just bought and get rid of them, we can jump over 27 light years in an unengineered ship. And if you do decide to go out and engineer this, I do recommend that you start by engineering your frameshift drive, which you can get at Farsir or Elvira Matuk. And with a grade 5 engineering on this ship, this will jump over 45 light years with an empty cargo hold and around 35 with a full cargo hold. So really good jump ship here makes it easy for you to get around. Now, finally, I just want to show you where you can find a station where you can buy all this stuff. Over here on eddb.io, I've already typed in all the different modules. I'm going to provide you a link where all this stuff is already pre-filled out for you. So you just have to go and follow the link in the description. It will take you to the site. And you can see here there exist 257 stations in Elite that has a dolphin, including all the modules you'll need. So to find the closest one to you, you're going to go down here to Reference System. You're going to type the system you're in. Right now, I'm in Shinrata Desra. So I'm going to type Shinrata Desra, and I'm going to go find station. And then I'll make sure it's sorted by distance in light years. And we can see here in LFT um, 926 at the station here, which is only 5.6 light years away from me, I can get this ship and all these modules. And if you're interested in more guides and ship builds, we go over to the commander's toolbox, over here, I've listed all the different builds I have. For instance, under mining, you can see I have a whole list of different mining ships for different situations. So if you're looking for an upgrade, for instance, here, there's a coal mining Python build, 
that also has no engineering required. So this could be a good upgrade if you want to go and explore coal mining for it. And also, of course, if you want to really upgrade this ship, there's a laser mining type 9 here that also requires no engineering. So lots of options here and also a fully engineered Imperial cutter for laser mining. Lots and lots of good different ships here. And also for combat, anti-sino combat, exploration, you can also find a host of different tools as well as guides for pretty much whatever you want to do in Elite. In the description, I will provide you a link to this site, which is called Coriolis, which is like a shipbuilding site where you can see the whole build so you don't have to sit and jump through the video to find the different modules. There will also be a link for EDDB, where you can go ahead and find the station to actually build this, as well as the Commander's Toolbox, where you can go and you can find other guides and ship builds over there. If you like this video, I would love if you would go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Give it a like as well if you did. Thanks a lot for watching and until next time, I will see you guys in space.